Good day. This is Rouse B. Wolf with a Minecraft Railroad tutorial episode number two. Now, for those of you who saw the first episode, we discussed the basics of laid down track and how to provide locomotion for our minecart railroad. But today we're going to add some more advanced features. Now, I've I've left in place basic, the basic railroad. This is not exactly the one I finished up episode number one with, but it's very similar to it. And let's see, let's go ahead and go down. We discussed, um, sorry. There we are. All right, we discussed my philosophy of railroads where I like railroads that will run continuously without any effort or input from the player. And so the player, all the player has to do is sit in the railroad and enjoy the scenery as it goes by. Now I was actually running that one in reverse. So let's see, hit the W key. Let's go ahead and ride around. So today what we're going to discuss is how to bring two tracks together into one track. Because as we start getting to more advanced functions and start having switching rails and train stations, uh, this is a feature that we are going to need to exploit. So let's take a look at this. And also, how to do crossing tracks. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to add... I'm going to put a spur here on the side. Now notice the spur doesn't go anywhere. Um, in a working track, this spur would actually go out into the woods there or something, and it would be a rail that you would ride on. Here we're just going to use it as a dead track. Now what we're doing is, here let me go up so you can look down on it, is we're going to bring this track and this track together into a single track, which is this one here. And the way you do that is just a simple corner. There's nothing here. If you notice, my collection of tools at the bottom of the screen are exactly the same as the collection of tools that we had before. This is nothing more than laying track in a corner. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and put the uh, hopper cart here. Give it a nudge. Let's get it going around the track. And we're going to watch it as it travels. Notice that when it comes across the back of this corner, it continues straight. So it's actually continuing the exact same loop that it did before. It does a little wiggle right here as it goes across the corner. And this is just, um, this is just uh, the behavior of Minecraft. So there's nothing you can do about it. You're always going to get a little wiggle when you drive across the back of a corner this way. But notice... It continues straight along here despite this corner. Now, only across the back of the corner, because if I were to, let's switch it. Whoop, see if it goes across the front of the corner, it ends up going straight. I actually jumped that little grass area and ended up back up on the track. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to put it back the way it was. I have to back that off so that it doesn't get fooled. And I'm going to put it there. There we go. Now it continues straight. When it goes across the back of the corner, it will continue straight along the intersection. And watch what happens. I'm going to actually remove this. Let me see. Remove it. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the cart here. Let me get my ore cart, my hopper cart. And I'm going to push it. And notice, see, it it ends up going in the same direction. So when I pushed it from here, it ends up going in the same direction. And when it comes to across here in the back, it ends up going in the same direction. So this is how you bring these two tracks together into a single track by driving across the back of the corner. This is very, very helpful for making complex railroad systems as we get more advanced. Now the next feature we're going to add is what is called a crossing track. And so let me go ahead and bust that. What we're going to do here is what I want to do is I want to have th this kind of configuration. I want to have this track go straight and this track go straight. 
But how am I going to choose that? And what we're going to do is we're going to use the exact same feature that we have here, where the track that we're coming from is going to drive across the back of the corner. So what I want to do, we're going to be coming down this way. So I'm going to take these two out. We're going to be coming down this way, and we want the, to go straight here. So we got to crawl, go the back of a corner, but... Oops, let me get rid of that. There. So this would do it. It would bring it back here, but the problem is, is this track... Uh, let's see, we'll, I'll deal with that later. This track is going to go down that track as well, and I don't want it to. I want it to go straight to here. So what I'm going to do here, get rid of that... And this is what you want to do. You want to combine with the corner the two destination tracks. So I want the cart to go out this way. When it comes down the hill, I want the cart to go out that way. So the destination tracks are joined at the corner. That way, this track drives across the back of the corner to continue straight. And the track coming down the hill drives across the corner to continue straight. So let me see what we're going to do here. To make this all right so our loop comes down it's going to loop around and let's shorten this a little bit there we go and so uh, let's uh, see what we can do here Laying some track. If you don't like it, you can always change it later. There we go. Put a little wiggle in there. Now, what we have is a figure eight. It's going to come down a straight, go straight across the corner, go around the inside loop, cross over the inside loop to the outside loop, go around the outside loop, get back on its quarter, and resume its trick. Now, let me see what we're going to do here. This track here isn't going to do much good, so I'm going to replace that. And let's give ourselves a power rail, I don't know, about right here. Uh, two, this may, not, this may be too big a track for just two power rails, but let's give it a shot. You can always add more later, right? So let's, I'm going to go ahead and use the hopper car. Let's give it a bump. W, run forward. So much car goes around. Let's see. Up the hill, down. We watch it as it goes across, straight across the, the the crossing, comes here, goes straight across the crossing, goes to the outer loop, back around, go through the other power rail, down the hill, see how it goes straight across the crossing into the inner loop, then it crosses the inner loop to the outer loop and continues its track. So what we have done essentially done here is we've used these two back corners as a method to cross one track over the next track and this always works there are other people who have little tricks for laying tracks where if you if you lay two tracks over top of each other it always turns north or east or something like that i never know where north or east is i always use the 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 bringing the tracks across the back of the corner because that way I have complete control over it. I don't have to rely on memory and I don't have to know my compass directions, which I never do in the world. I just see a place I want to go to because I like the scenery and I lay my track in that direction. And this will always work. The only thing you do get out of this is you get that little wiggle. Anytime they go across the corner, they are going to wiggle. So as you can watch it here, as it crosses the outer track to go to the inner track, and then it's going to come around and cross the inner track to go to the outer track. There we are. Got quite a bit of slowdown before the power rails. I could probably add one more power rail, but I actually enjoy the variable speed. It actually makes you feel like you're riding on a real physical railroad when it slows down for a little bit uh sort of like a roller coaster you know they slow down after they've gone up a few hills before they go down another hill to pick up some more speed all right and one last thing i want to discuss before we exit this video is your scenery 
All right, the scenery is a big part of the railroad experience, and having these redstone torches may or may not be your idea of beautiful scenery. So what works really well is what we're going to do is we're going to dig a hole two squares deep, and at the bottom of this hole, we're going to put a redstone torch, the same one that was right here previously. Then we're going to put one block of dirt in. So see how it's right over top of it? Actually, let me dig down here beside it so you can see it. Okay, so the, there's one block between the redstone torch and the power rail. Notice the power rail is glowing. I'm going to get rid of the torch. See how the power rail turns off? I'm going to put the torch back. Let's see if I can get the power rail in the picture. Power rail on, power rail off, power rail on. All right, so as long as there's a torch one block down below it, the power rail is on. What this does, and then we just cover it back up. You just don't, you can put a block there, there. Now, your scenery doesn't have, see, it doesn't have that anymore, but the power rail still has power on it. And I'll prove it to you by putting the card here and giving it a little bump. And off it goes. So putting it underneath the rail is the same as putting it beside the rail. So whatever it gives, gives you redstone power to your power rail. So I'm going to do the same thing here for this one so that we can get that out of your landscape. So, so we're going to go, whoops, okay, take that block out, put a redstone torch in there, there put your blocks back, and now it's all powered up. Put your cart back on and bump it, and off it goes. Now... Our landscape is free of the redstone circuitry that we had before powering the rails. We're still powering the rails. Now, I'm not saying there won't be times when you have to put the redstone torch beside it. Uh, sometimes if you're on a bridge or if you're in a narrow pass where you can't, there's, uh, there's nothing underneath it, like it's over water or something, uh, you'll have to put the redstone torch beside it, and that's just the nature of... Uh, of Minecraft. So our features today are we got rid of the redstone torch on the exterior of our power rails so that frees up your scenery to look more scenic and the other feature was how to drive across the back of a corner to bring two rails together on a single rail or in this case to have a rail crossing. So let's, uh, let's take a quick trip around and off we go. You'll actually see the little wiggle there. Join the scenery and the ride. Here's our diagonal that we discussed in episode number one. Power rail speeds us up. We're slowing down. You, as you can see we're actually going a little faster as a rider in a mine car as opposed to the mass of the hopper car. So we're actually kind of a little more massive, meaning the mathematics for the uh, mine car is uh, suggests that it's a little heavier than the hopper car, which we had go around independently. All right. Well, this is this is all I have for episode two. Uh, come back for episode three and we'll have even more tricks and fun for making your epic railroads even more epic and we'll give you some more ideas to keep on railroading.